So on here, you can use these choices more than once. I did that to make it a little bit tougher. You know how I always try to make the study guide harder than the test? Okay, on the test, they will all match up one-to-one. -one. So you can use process of elimination. Also, let me say this on the recording. Do you guys know if you get down to like two or three at the end and you really just have absolutely no idea, you should put the same letter for all of them because you'll get one of them right instead of all of them wrong. Yeah, or if you want to, you know, roll the dice, but just throwing it out there. Okay, number one, what can you replace tangent with? Sine over cosine. Good. Again, it's a series of replacements, and that negative is just going to stay there. And then the cosine, I'm going to keep, but I'm going to put it over one. Again, that's usually a good idea to just keep it over one. The whole point of changing it to sines and cosines is you're looking for something that cancels. So what's going to cancel? Yeah. Cosines cancel. You get negative sine. Now, negative sine is not an answer choice, but it does match with one of those. Which one does it match with? Yeah, B, sine negative X is the same as negative sine X. So B, I'm not going to cross it off, though, because we might use it again. On your test, you'd be able to cross it off. This one is one of your Pythagorean identities. You can actually just get the answer. You don't have to do anything to that. Do you remember that one, secant squared minus one? It is tangent squared F as in flamingo. All right, here we're going to need to do some replacements. You can replace secant, bless you, with one over, bless you, one over cosine, large fraction bar, and you can replace cosecant with one over sine. When you divide by a fraction, you multiply by reciprocal. So you're just going to flip this one over. So it'll be one over cosine times, like put your little dot there, sine over one. And that's why putting the ones there is so helpful. Nothing cancels out. But if you kind of like put that together, you get sine over cosine, which is tangent. So that one is E as in elephant. Okay. Now, when you look at this one, it isn't going to be sine squared minus cosine squared. It's the whole thing squared, which means you need to write it twice. For the sake of space, here's my suggestion. Just scribble out the little square and write it again. That's my my suggestion to you. You can take or leave my advice, but I'm not going to give you bad advice, okay? okay. All right, so when you multiply all this together, sine times sine is going to be sine squared. The outsides, and follow me here, will give you a minus sine times cosine. And the insides will give you a minus sine times cosine. So together, that's minus two sine times cosine. And then when you multiply the last parts, a negative times a negative is going to be a positive. Cosine times cosine is cosine squared. And then there is one replacement you can do there. And it's a little tricky because the thing you're replacing is two, two items that are not next to each other. But if you have sine squared plus cosine squared, that can be replaced with one. So do you see a choice that is one minus two sine cosine? L, L is in lovely. Now that one was a little bit harder. So here's my pep talk. They're not all gonna be really hard. You know, it's like a collection of easy, medium and harder problems. So you would save one like that till the end and then use your choices to narrow it down. All right, number five, what can you replace cotangent with? Good, that's cosine over sine. And then sine I'm going to keep, but I'm going to put it over one. So we play, replace cotangent with cosine over sine. The sines cancel, and you get cosine, which is C as in coconut. All right, for this one, you have this sign outside of the parentheses. We're going to need to distribute it. So the first part is going to be sine times cosecant. Now, I'm not going to write sine times cosecant, though, because what can you replace cosecant with? One over sine. 
And some of you are already there. That is going to just give us one. And if you wanted to just go ahead and write one, if you can do that in your head, that's fine. Now, when you distribute to the second part, it's going to be minus sine times sine. So minus sine squared. So yes, as a bunch of you were saying, these cancel. You get one minus sine squared. That's a Pythagorean identity. What can you replace one minus sine squared with? Cosine squared. Cosine squared. So that is D as in dangerous. Seven is really similar to four. You have that sine squared plus cosine squared that you can replace with one. So we've got one plus tangent squared. And that's a Pythagorean one. What is one plus tangent squared? Secant squared, good. So that one is J as in jumping beans. I don't know. All right, so here we're gonna do a bunch of replacements because I don't see sines and cosines. What can you replace cosecant with? Get one over sine, because you guys have got these. These are like little puzzles. You can replace secant with one over cosine, beautiful. Huge fraction bar. And you can replace cotangent cosine over sine. And so again, you want to multiply by the reciprocal. I'm running out of space because this one was kind of larger. I'm going to just flip this over and write it next here. So it'll be sine over cosine. So you're flipping this over. I, I, I didn't have space to rewrite the whole thing. So just kind of ignore that. We're going to look at this part. I just did the reciprocal. Um, so one of them's going to cancel and one of them's actually not. Which one cancels? Yeah, sine cancels. You're left with one over cosine squared. Good, because there's two of them. So one over cosine squared, and then that would be secant squared. So again, J. All right, so replacements. What could you replace one over tangent squared with? One over um, I know you're trying to go for the sines and cosines. I would probably just go for the easy one though first and we can see where to go from there. One over tangent would be cotangent. It's just that it's gonna be squared, right? So this is cotangent squared plus um, cotangent times tangent. That would just be one, right? Because this one's one over tangent and that one's, or you could think of this one's cosine over sine and that one's sine over cosine. Anyway, they're reciprocals, So you're gonna just end up with one. Oh, and then that is our Pythagorean one. We haven't looked at that one yet. Cotangent squared plus one is cosecant squared. Where is that? G is in gorilla. For number 10, look. Do you see how you have a tangent squared and then just a tangent and then a three? You wanna think of it more like this, four X squared plus X minus three. Do you remember? And then we factored it. I'm not gonna actually do the problem because this is matching and there's only one answer that would make sense. Which one looks like you factored it? M. And is that what I expect you to do on the test too? Yep. <laughs> You don't have to actually do the problem if it's matching and you can figure it out. All of these are matching and then the equations you have to actually do. Okay. Um, what can we replace cotangent with? Good, cosine over sine. What can we replace secant with? One over cosine. So we can already see those cosines are gonna cancel. Huge fraction bar, and you can replace cosecant with one over sine. So actually, like the whole thing cancels. There's one on your quiz like that. The whole thing cancels and you just get one, which is A as in abracadabra. I like making up silly words for that. It's weird. All right, these are your even and odd ones. The even ones turn positive, the odd ones turn negative. So, well, this first part's just tangent of x. Cosine is even 
So it's going to be positive. So just plus cosine. Yeah, and see, sometimes like you'll mentally be able to get that. I want to write all that, all the steps down though. So hold on. Tangent is odd, so it's going to go negative. And these cancel. And yes, it will just be cosine. So that is C as in crazy. I think that's what I said for the first one, though. The first C that we did. Maybe not. All right. Coconut. C is in coconut. C is in whatever you want. All right. Um, what can we replace cotangent with? Good. That one's cosine over sine. And then tangent, sine over cosine. Now, this is a tougher one. Again, they're not all going to be really hard, and you'll be able to use your process of elimination. You need a common denominator, which is sine times cosine. Sometimes you just multiply them by each other. It's like if you want a common denominator between five and three, it would be 15. Do you get what I'm saying? Like that's what it would be with like numbers. Um, so we're just going to multiply them by each other. So this one would need a cosine. And then this one would need a sine. Yes, and again, you're mentally doing it ahead of me, so just hold on. And if you can mentally do that on the test, it's matching. If you can figure out the match, then you're you're good. But I'm doing the problem in front of everyone, so I want to write down every step. Um, so yes, when we put all this together, it'll be cosine squared plus sine squared for the numerator. And your denominator is sine times cosine, or cosine times sine. It doesn't really matter what order you think. Good, so the numerator is actually just one, like that whole thing's just one. And so when you see one over something, you're reciprocating it. So what's your reciprocal for sine? Uh, 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 yeah. Cosecant. Cosecant, and your reciprocal for cosine? Uh, secant. secant. So you want something that's, and I don't know what order it would be written in, but K, K is in koala. All right, again, replacements. You can replace cotangent with cosine over sine. <laughs> cosine, I'm going to leave there, but what do I keep suggesting to do? Put it over one. And then cosecant is one over sine. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> nothing cancels. You would have cosine squared over sine squared, bless you, which would be cotangent squared. Cosine over sine is cotangent, it's just that it's squared. So cotangent squared. Um, N, as in Neverland. I'm going to say 15 for last because that's one of the harder ones. I just want to get this one done. This is your co-function identity. You just add or remove a co. So, and this is where you have to say them correctly in your mind or it's not gonna work. If you're calling this cot, it's not gonna work. Co-tangent, but you're gonna remove a co. So it's just tangent. So that one is E as in everlasting. I'm gonna need to do this one over here. This one's gonna require a little bit more space. Um, I'm gonna just recopy the problem real quick. And again, this one's a tougher one, but they're not all going to be really hard. Like, it'd be like one or two tougher ones. And again, you can use your process of elimination. Unfortunately, you need a common denominator. Your common denominator is just going to be those two things. All right. So this one, you're going to have to multiply by one minus sine. And this one, you're going to have to multiply by cosine, and it kind of turns into a little bit of a disaster. You'll be okay. Maybe. We'll see what happens. So here you have to distribute the sign through there. That's going to give you what? If you distribute sign through these parentheses. Good. Sine minus sine squared. And then this second half would be minus cosine squared. Good. Over your common denominator. Did you say this is disgusting? I would have to agree. It kind of is. 
Okay, now follow me on this because I'm going to talk you through a little bit of it so that you don't have to write down every last little thing. Sine squared plus cosine squared is one, but do you see how instead it would be minus one instead of plus one? Okay, so I'm going to kind of scribble that out and just write minus one. So your numerator is sine minus one. And then something does cancel even though it's kind of backwards. Do you see how this is sine minus one and this is one minus sine? Okay, when that happens, they do cancel, but you have to put a negative because they were backwards of each other. So we get negative one over cosine. Oh, it will be secant, but it will be negative secant, which is H, which is the last one we hadn't used yet. So on the test, what you want to do is save the most difficult one for last, and it's the answer you didn't use yet. Cool. How that work here? How so the two topics on the exam are what we just did are the identities and then the equations. The identities are all matching, so only one point each. This is where the bulk of the points are. Okay, so this is what we like really need to focus on. Um, what I would do is look through and maybe put a star next to the ones that aren't just an X. These are the ones we did last time. Do you remember how there could be a 2X in there or a 3X or a half an X? That tells you how many times to go around the circle. So those are a little bit different and they have like one extra step. Largely the same, but there's that one extra step. So do you see one that's not just an X? 18 has an X over two. So you're only gonna go halfway around. And then I think I'll put one more that has not just an X. 19, okay. So just to be aware of those starting out, and I would suggest that when you take the test as well. All right, so um, let's look at 17. First step, you would add four. And again, if you write small, you can make this fit. If you write large, you might want a scratch sheet of paper. You know yourself, right? Oh, sorry, I forgot the squared. Secant squared. When it's secant or cosecant, I would reciprocate it. You just flip both sides. Your reciprocal for secant is cosine and it's squared. And if you reciprocate four, it is one fourth. So I would just flip it over. It's easier to deal with sine and cosine than it is secant and cosecant. And then you need to square root, which means you're going to put plus or minus. When you square root a fraction, just do the numerator and do the denominator. So what's your square root of one? One, and the square root of four, two. Oh my gosh, it came out to a half. I know, nuts. What quadrants are we in since it's plus and minus? All of them, which is nice because it takes like part of that thought process out. You don't really need to think about it. It's just all of them. Looks like a little bow tie. So cosine's the x value. I don't really have space because my picture is too tiny, but the one half would go here. Are you seeing where I'm pointing? Because I don't really have a better explanation than it's right here. This would be the one half. That means that this side is square root of three over two. And that means your angle is pi over three. You'll have a lot more room on the test. I just tried to get the study guide onto one piece of paper. Plus so four answers, we're gonna go around our unit circle and do all the thirds. So pi over three, and what else? Yep. Two pi over three, yep. four pi over three, five pi over three, beautiful. So for 18, just as a heads up, we're only going to go halfway around the circle. If you weren't here last time, that's the one thing you missed. If you don't have just an X, that tells you how many times to go around. So this one's only going to go halfway around. This one's going to go three times around. So just be aware of this. All right, first thing you would do is subtract one and then divide by two. All right, so cosine X over two equals negative a half. Oh my gosh, came out to a half. Now here you have to actually worry about what quadrants you're in, uh, but if you can't figure it out, make a guess. There's only four, right? Um, cosine is the X value. You want where that's negative, or you could remember your all students take calculus. However you want to think of that, uh, this is going to be in quadrants two and three. 
So again, cosine is the X value. The negative a half would go right here. I'm not going to write that in because my picture is too tiny. Usually I would, but this is too small to make it fit. So if that's the one half or negative a half in this case, that means this side, square root of three over two, and your angle's pi over three. If you're like, oh my gosh, that's the exact same thing we just drew here, except only this half of it. You're right. Very repetitive, the unit circle. So instead of x equals, you're going to write x over 2 equals. Again, there's that one extra step. And we're only going to go halfway around. So what does that mean? You're only going to get, yeah, like this first answer. You're not going to get this one because you're only going halfway around. Um, so that is 2 pi over 3. And then you just have to get x by itself. So you have to times by 2 to cancel out those twos. So again, just has, <clears throat> has that one extra step in it. So x would equal 4 pi over 3. 2 times 2 is 4 is all we did there. Now, this one can potentially have a lot of answers because we're going to go three times around the circle. What would you do to get the cotangent by itself? Yeah, minus one divide by square root of three. Now, I'm going to need to back up one more step. It would be negative a half over square root of three over two. Again, I've said this a billion times. If you can't figure it out, put the one half somewhere and the square root of three over two somewhere, you have a 50-50 shot of getting it because it's one way or the other. Now we want where cotangent is negative. Tangent and cotangent go across from each other um, where it's negative. So which two quadrants would that be? Yeah, two and four, very good. Cotangent is X over Y. So the one half is the x. I can actually make it fit this time. There's the negative one half. And then your square root of three over two is the y. So again, we get pi over three. But we're going to go three times around the circle. So it's not x equals, it's three x equals. And how many total answers will we get if we go three times around? You'll get six because it's these two and then you just keep on going. Okay, but I told you I would only give you a two, a three, or a one half. There, it's not going to be more complicated than that. All right, so this first one is two pi over three. And then the second one is five pi over three. Now, when you add on a rotation, it's two pi, right, for the whole way around. How many thirds is that? Six thirds. So you're going to just take these two answers and basically just add six to the numerator. You're adding on six thirds. So two plus six is eight, and five plus six is 11. And then you just have to do it again, because we're going three times around. So you're gonna take those two and then just add six to the numerator, basically. So that would be 14 pi over three and 17 pi over three. It's not hard, it's just more writing. And I mean, you can all add six to things. I believe in you, okay? And then last step, <laughs> you have to divide by three. Now these are all already over three. If you've divided by three and you divide by three again, this one always trips people up. It's now over nine, okay? So I don't think any of them are gonna reduce. You can just blindly copy all of these as ninths. And you can complain that that's annoying. That's fine. You're allowed to feel however you want to feel, but you still have to write it if you want the points. I guess you always have a choice. All right, onward. Let's keep going. What would you do to start solving number 20? All right, divide by two. So sine squared equals a half. And then square root. So when you square root, you're going to put plus and minus. You square root, the square root the numerator and then the denominator. So square root of 1 is 1. Square root of 2 is square root of 2. So it ends up being square root of 2 over 2.
So what quadrants are you in? All of them. And for your square root of two over two triangle, it's pi over four. So you're gonna just go around the circle and list out all the fourths. So that would be pi over four, three pi over four, five pi over four, seven pi over four. Keep calm and know the units are there. I like solving equations. I like these better than the identities, bless you. All right, look at 21. What do you notice or what would you try to do with that? You're gonna factor it. Now there's not a ton of space on here, but if you wanna write off to the side, bless you, 4x squared minus 4x plus one equals zero, like, and think of it that way, you can, because that's what we're doing. Um, you're just gonna split it apart. So draw your two blank parentheses. How would you split four? Two and two. Just instead of two X, it's gonna be two cosine, good. Cosine times cosine is cosine squared is what we did there. And then how do you split one? Yeah, one, one times one is one. That does trick people up though. One is like, I don't know, it gets people because it's like, wait, what is that? Well, one times one is one. And then what symbols would you need in there? Negatives. Now what's kind of nice about this one is that they're the exact same thing. You know, usually it would turn into two problems. You'd have to do the first one and then the second one. What's kind of nice about this is since they came out to the same thing, you really only need to do one of them. Uh, so what would you do to start solving that? Yeah. Add one plus one, divide by two. Oh my gosh, that's pretty much the same as one of the pictures that we drew earlier. You just have to decide what quadrants you're in. Where is cosine positive? One and four. It's your X value. So if the X value is positive, you went to the right. Or you could remember your all students take calculus. So this is the one half. This side here, this is square root of three over two, and your angle is pi over three. And so you get pi over three and five pi over three. All right, for the next one, you're gonna factor it as well. What do you notice that they both have? Sign. So you're going to take out a sign. It's GCF. And then you're going to put what's left after you divide out sign, which would be tangent plus one. Good. Now, this actually did become two separate problems. This one was kind of nice. They were the same thing, so we only had to do one of them. This is two separate problems, like a part A and a part B. So we're going to do sine equals zero. And then we're going to do this part equals zero, but we'll do them one at a time. Now, sine equals zero. That won't be a triangle, be a circle. Sine is the y value. So you want where the y value is zero. So left and right. Good. And so those answers will be zero pi and one pi. And then when you do the other one, you would subtract the one. And that's tricky because it feels like it should be a circle. But for tangent, it's not. It's quadrants two and four. And it's your square root of two over two triangle because anything over itself is one. So your angle is pi over four, bless you, I haven't done one with a sixth in it. I hope a sixth comes up because we did a bunch of thirds and fourths and need one with a sixth. All right, and so these answers are three pi over four and seven pi over four. You're gonna be okay, you can make it. Top shot, go ahead. Like for them to go in order of the unit circle. 
Oh, I get what you're saying. No, no. Like, because I view these, like once it splits, I view that almost as like two totally separate problems. I get what you're asking. Yeah. No, you don't have to like recopy them or anything. All right, for this one, you would add the square root of three. So it's going to be positive and then divide by two. So, oh my gosh, it comes out to square root of three over two. So what quadrants is sine positive in? One and two, it looks like little kitty cat ears. And again, I wish I had done one that was a pi over six. I'm sure there's one on here somewhere. But this one again will be pi over three. And so it's pi over three and two pi over three. All right, for this one, you would add one and divide by square root of three. And then you have to back up one more step. This would be what over what? One half over square root of three over two. If you feel like you're doing the same thing over and over again, good, that's exactly what this is. All right, cotangent and it's positive. So that would be one because everything is positive in one and three, they go across from each other. Now cotangent is X over Y. So the X is the one half. Gosh, I did another one that was a pi over three. Oh, you know what? I see some that'll be a pi over six later on. I just wanna make sure I did one that was a six. All right, and so your answers are pi over three, and then what's this one? Four pi over three, good. All right, for these last four, now all of these, you were just solving for once around the unit circle, and I say once around the unit circle, but these ones, like it's telling you to go more times around or only halfway around. This one says solve for all solutions. So that means at the end, you're gonna tack on that plus two pi n or plus pi n or plus pi over two n. Do you remember how it's like takes care of forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever? And ever, and ever. Yeah. Okay, but it starts out the same way. So for this one, to get rid of the squared, you would square root. And when you square root, you put plus and minus. That does get people because the square root of one is one. And so people forget to put the plus minus on the one. Um, so just try to remember that. So what quadrants are we in? All of them. I love when that happens. It's more writing a little bit because you have more answers, but you don't have to think at all. It's just all of them. And so what are the sides of your triangle so that you end up with one? Where is two over two? And so this is five or four. This is the only time this will work because the fourths are the ones that are evenly spaced from each other. So this is kind of a special case where this is the only time this will work. Your answers are pi over four plus pi over two n. That's the only time you can get away with adding the pi over two n, and it only works because these are evenly spaced. If you have a pi over three or a pi over six, that won't work. You have to write them separately because they are not evenly spaced from each other, okay? But it's how far do you need to go to get to the next answer is what you're doing. All right, so for this one, you're going to add one. And that will not be a triangle, that'll be a circle. Uh, there's only one place where that's gonna be true. Where is the Y value one up? Oh. Thanks for going with my vocabulary of that. I realized that a long time ago when I would question my students. I'm like, I need words for this. I'm like, let's just go with up, down, left, right. So what is that amount of rotation? Is pi over two. Now look, look, you have to go the whole way around the circle to get there again. So perfect, plus two pi n, beautiful. Uh, I think it must be because I know I put one of them on here. All right, for this one, we're going to add one 
and then divide by three. So add one, divide by three. So it'll be one third. And you're probably like, hey, one third's not on the unit circle. Well, we're not done yet. You have to square root. And again, it's plus minus. When you square root a fraction, just do the numerator and do the denominator. Square root of one is one. Square root of three is square root of three. And so it is one half over square root of three over two. I'm gonna have to write really small for this one. All right, we are in all the quadrants. <clears throat> And tangent is what over what? Good, y over x. So the y value is the one half, and here it is, the angle will be pi over six. So again, look it, you can't write it like we did this one. Do you see how these are really similar, but it's a different angle? You can't write it this way because these aren't all evenly spaced you're gonna to have to write two separate answers. You can't write it all as one because they're not evenly spaced. So the first one's pi over six and just watch me point to it. That takes care of this one. If you go halfway around the circle, it's pi n and that will take care of this one. So you can get the two that are across from each other and then you have to write a separate statement for these two, again, you can't write it all at the same time because they're not all the same amount from each other. So the other one would be good, five pi over, you guys got it, plus pi n, beautiful. And then last one, what would you do to start solving it? Yeah, minus the square root of three, so it's gonna be negative square root of three over two. Oh my gosh, it came out to square root of three over two. Like usual, when I finish this problem, I have a few more things to say, so don't like immediately tune me out, okay? Now you have to figure out what quadrants you're in because it's not all of them. I want where cosine is negative. Two and three. That one and that one. Sometimes my brain won't count them, but it's just like, I know it's to the two to the left, to the left, all right? Cosine's the x value, so this is your negative square root of three over two. I don't really have a space to write that in, but that means the other side is one half. Oh, and so this is another one that is pi over six. Oh. And we're gonna have to write two separate statements for this one as well. So there's gonna be two, these kind of words on the... So what is this amount of rotation? Five pi over six. Now look, you have to go the whole way around the circle to land there again. So plus two pi n, good. And then for the other one, seven pi over six plus two pi n. 